everybody. Welcome back to the Little Green Pasture. It's good to be back, and I hope everybody's doing good. I've got stuff to share today, and like usual, you know me. I come prepared to a degree, but I like the freedom of just flowing with the Spirit. So, I do have some verses and things, but that's only because something God is doing in my life and shared with me this morning a word that I really needed. And I said, that is such a good word. I'm going to share it, Lord, with others that may need it. So before I get started, I am going to pray. Heavenly Father, I bow down. Maybe not physically right now at this desk, but I bow before you. For you are God, you are Lord of heaven and earth, and you are our God, you are my God. And it's you whom I serve, before whom I walk and whose I am. I consider nothing to be that of my own. Like the song of Solomon woman who said, I am my beloved's and he is mine, and he is all my desire. Lord, I just ask that you will be glorified in this message and that you would come out in front and that, Lord, you would be heard, you would be seen, and that, Lord, I will hide behind your cross. Lord, I pray, be glorified. Be with my mouth, be with my heart, and let your living waters flow. Lord, let it be as refreshing as a warm south wind from heaven. I pray you bless this message, Lord, as you blessed it to me, let it bless the heart and lives of others, and not just to touch and go, but to be carried with them in the name of Jesus Christ for all of their life. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so there's been a lot going on in my life, and not particularly my life, but my life can uh, uh in context with my mother. You know, I've spoken about her before. And so there's been some changes with her that are definitely demanding my pretty much all day, every day attention. And I don't want to get into her private business, right? Because I want to protect her uh, personal space. Um, but just let me tell you, this, is, this has been a real uh, trial for me. But it's one of those trials that all of us go will go through. And oh gosh, I just say that not like it's some kind of awful burden to me. She's my mother and I love her so much. And I just want to make that clear, right? You know, it says in the word, despise not thy mother when she is old. And I would think that would be for all of our, you know, parents. And um, and one day, if the Lord shall tarry <clears throat> and we should get older, maybe you're watching and you're older than me. I pray that the Lord will bless you in your elder years and be gracious to you and carry you and um, deliver you and, and give you joy. So there's a lot going on. And my goodness, it's like it's like a big two by four came out of the horizontal spiritual world. And so much stuff has been happening. And um at the same time, I got called for jury service <laughs> and the week my mom needs me, but God was gracious to me and released to me from that. And that was only by his grace. Um, and I, I just don't want to get into all the details. Just believe me when I tell you it was like one whole day and I'm not going to even compare my life to Joe, but you know how that one day everything came down <clears throat> on him and it's like everything did on us. And so, you know, during these times, you know, we pray through, we walk through and, you know, you, you do get to a certain time and age in your life where, you know, this isn't, this isn't my first trial, my first onslaught. So being conditioned, the disciplined and conditioned saint that I am, you know, and of course this is different because it's emotional, but Hey, I've been emotional. There's been some horrible trials I went through that were nothing but horrifically emotional. But, you know, in those things, God walked me through those things. And I was really thinking about my time here with you guys on uh, this, this little green pasture. And I start, I remember starting off, you know, giving, you know, 
you know, just sharing, but I kind of was getting more at some point into deeper studies and deeper studies. And I was making longer and longer videos. And I cringe when I think about it because I go, oh, I wish I wouldn't have made hour and a half long videos. That's not who I want to be. But God brought me through that way. And where I am today is something so simple. I think I said this to you guys last time is that, you know, it, it just has to be real, you know, and if, if my life is not an open book to you and I'm not real to you, then what am I doing? Right. And that's what true koinonia is. And I know this is not a koinonia hour, but koine, um, koinonia is more intimate. And, you know, really where I'm at with this YouTube channel, this little green pasture that I call it is that it has to feel like a place where all of us gather, where we gather. I mean, if you were in person, I'd be able to like talk to you and look at you, but I am looking at you. I'm looking at you right now, though I may not see you. I know you're looking at me and I want everybody to know that I want to just always, and I will always be absolutely real. And there's just this, this, I'm, I'm not going to call it a drive, but this this strength that is coming in of the Lord saying, let your purest, purest aroma come forth. You know, like when you, the, like the work of the apothecary and how he was crushing, crushing the cassia, the aloes, the, the spices, and the more that apothecary crushed those spices, the more of that most uh, potent perfume came forth for the anointing oil. And I thought, you know, at some point, I don't want to just be here making my two videos a week with something where everybody begins to yawn and say, we've heard that. Um, you know, I, I believe that your life and my life has an aroma to it. It speaks, our life speaks. And it has to speak to the rest of the world. It has to not just speak. I mean, while we're in, I'm talking about like, cause we are in a radical onslaught right now, but I, you know what? I, I got into the word this morning. Let me tell you, I have been thoroughly exhausted on top of, you know, remember I had my leg surgery and everything, but Hey, you know what? This is life. And I'm not a talking head. I'm here today, not in the flesh at all, but in the spirit, in my spirit, in the strength of my spirit. And I got a good night's sleep and I woke up this morning and I wanted to get into God's word like I normally do. And I prayed to God. I was sleepy. I prayed through and then I opened his word. I opened his word and I began to read Psalm 136. And when I got to the place of 13 through 16, it says, to him which divided the Red Sea into parts, for his mercy endureth forever, and made Israel to pass through the midst of it. Well, you know what? I locked my eyes right there on those words. Through the midst of it. And I looked at that and I felt such a flow of the Holy Spirit. I'm not saying I heard words, audible words, but I understood by the by the moving of the Spirit within me because I have ears to hear in my spirit. And if I could put words to what I was receiving from him, and I'm careful to say that these are my words, but the, the understanding was so crystal clear because everything that we are facing right now is heavy and it's all around us it's this came this came this came this came down on top of us and i i was like i we're powerless in each of these things but you know what i've stood in that place before this isn't hype this isn't me getting all up in my flesh because i have a burst of flesh energy this is coming from my spirit to yours. And I'm truly hoping that everything I'm saying, if this is feeding you, then it's for you as it much as it was for me. If this word is not for you, put it in, file it in the back of your head for future reference because you're going to need it. Okay. And that the Lord will bring it to your remembrance. You'll, you watch and see the Lord. But I say to you, um, in the, I, in, you know, I, I say this, uh, gently, the Lord will bring it to your mind hopefully, but I pray he will. But when I saw that, here's what I heard within me. I didn't just deliver my people through the midst of a Red Sea. 
just, just to deliver them. I did it for everybody that was watching them and that will see that forever. Because what I did for them, I will do for each of you. I will do for you. I am in the midst of you. And I thought, I mean, and I'm saying that is how I heard it. And it came in strong. And it went on to say, but overthrew Pharaoh and his host in the Red Sea for his mercy endureth forever. And we know that he led them through the midst of the desert. And, you know, all of a sudden, it's like a well, a fountain opened up in me. And I began to, and, and I thought, you know, and I my mind went over to Psalm 137, where it says, um, when we uh, sat down, I believe it was, it, it was Psalm 137, um, by, the, by, the, by the river of Babylon, there we sat. Um, and we, and it said, went on to say, um, for we hung our harps on the willows in the midst thereof. And they that took us captive required us of, as a, of a song. And those that, you know, he went on to say, and they required of us mirth. And he, they said, how could we, how could we, for, how should we forget the Lord's song? You know, at, in the, uh, gosh. Maybe I should just read it, which I'm more than happy to read it. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. For there they that carried us away captive required of us a song. And they that wasted us required of us mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. And they said, they responded, how shall we sing the Lord's song in a straight, strange land? And it goes on to talking about, don't forget the Lord. You know, if we forget the, let my right hand forget her cunning and so forth. But you see, that was a real place that the Israelites were. That was a real place for them in their day. And God did bring them out with mighty signs and wonders and with a stretched out hand. And you know, that night God went through the midst of Egypt and then after that, he said, now I'm going to go before them through the Red Sea. And then they're going to go down in the midst of it. They're going to go down in the midst of it. And it says here, uh, um, well, I guess I don't really need to read it too, so we know the story. It says that Moses held his wrought out. That was the first thing is he did what God told him to do. He says, stretch forth your rod. And here's what it says. Here it is. He says, lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on the dry ground through the midst of the sea. And he goes on. He says, I'm going to get my honor upon Pharaoh. And so we know the angel of the Lord went, uh, removed and went behind them and the pillar of the cloud went before that their face and stood behind them and it came between the camp of the egyptians and the camp of israel and so forth and so we know that the children of israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground and we also know it says in the new testament it says for he marched with them through the Red Sea on dry land. He mar he went with them in the midst of the sea. He didn't just part the sea and say, okay, go, go on. It said he marched with them. That's what Paul says. He marched with them through the midst of the Red Sea. And then I talked about the hanging the harps upon the willow. That was a real place. They were in captivity. There we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. And, you know, God is such a merciful God. He's so, he's so good that even though they went into captivity because they refused to repent, you know, they, they remembered, they made sure that even though they, they blew it, they remembered, they said, we're going to remember him, but they hung their harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. And sometimes that, you know, that, that represents your song and you're going to hang up your harp in that place upon the branches in the midst of the willows. I really believe that's where we get the name weeping willows. Um, 
And so they talked about singing the Lord's song in the strange land. And you know, is this not the strange land that we live in? It is a strange land. It's not friendly to us. It's all this land and the inhabitants of it um, will try to do everything to take from you. Um, we may dwell in the midst of, remember Isaiah said, I dwell in the midst of an ungodly people, in the midst of people with ungodly lips. I think that's how he said it. And so we can dwell in the midst of this land, in the midst of chaos and in the midst of it. But God says he's in the midst with us. And they went with God. They were visually seeing things, were reading. But it was so strong to me that today where the Lord is saying, if you can, if they can see that, he said, I'm letting you see that. I, I could feel it in my heart. Like he was saying, you can see that without seeing that. Because you see, I dwell in the midst of you now. And I am, he says, you know, I am in the midst of you. Where two or three are gathered together. There am I in the midst of you. You know, I love what it says also too in Psalm 138, 7 through 8. Though I walk in the midst of trouble. Thou wilt will revive me. And it says, you'll stretch forth your hand against the wrath of my enemies and thy right hand shall save me. I noticed that every time, most of the time it talks about God being in the midst of something. It either has to do something with absolute holiness, his temple. He dwells, it spoke to like, for instance, you know, he, he sits in the, um, between the cherubs in the midst of the cherubs. Uh, when he hung on the cross, he was in the midst of two thieves. Um, when he appeared to his disciples, it said the doors were shut and they were inside. And Jesus appeared in the midst of them after his resurrection. And we, I, I you know, and I was thinking about another word that came. It says, I, to the end that thou mayest know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth. You know, Psalm 74, 12 says that he worketh salvation in the midst of the earth. And all of a sudden that Bible just really opened up to me. My mind flooded with that word midst, 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 the Lord in the midst of you, the Lord in the midst of you. You know, he spoke to Moses out of the midst of the fire. He called Moses out of the midst, midst of the cloud and thick darkness. Even the tree of life was in the midst of the garden. And in the end, in the new heaven, in the new earth, that tree will still be, in the, again, will be in the midst of the garden. You know, Jesus tells us, told his disciples, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be therefore wise as serpents and harmless of do as doves. And, you know, um, there's something happening to us that is completely from the enemy. And, you know, I woke up with an incredible uncanny peace where I thought I should be full of wrath because what's happening is not fair, like beyond and a lie. And it's happened before. And I'll just say it, it's with one of our neighbors and it's like ever since we moved into our little apartment they have literally said some terrible things about us to the property management that are complete lies and you know we have kept silent since then and we've just said well it's not true and because we were peaceable people and we want to live peacefully but you know what i was comforted this morning that even with what's going on with my mom what's going on with all the changes what's going on here what's going on there he says, the Lord in the midst of thee is mighty. You know, I, when Jesus, when they tried to throw Jesus off the cliff after he said, and what you remember when he read out of the book of Isaiah chapter 53, and it says that they were angry and they tried to throw him off the cliff. And it says, but he passing through the midst went his way. And, you know, I, I think to myself, we, we're passing through the midst of our enemies just like Jesus did. And if we cannot see exactly what Jesus did for them, then we're praying and believing a different God. 
Now, we're not going to see the Pacific Ocean part. We don't need to have the Pacific or Atlantic Ocean or whatever nation you're living in. The sea is near you. God does not have to do that. He already demonstrated that. And so that showed me, that gave me such powerful strength, you know, that the Lord, you know, he's in the midst of us. And he's not. I think what I think what has happened is we have religiousized. I know that that's not a real word. Everything to the point where many times we allow God to be God, but only in an a la carte, sporadic, and erratic way. And maybe you don't realize you're doing it. Maybe I don't always realize I'm doing it. But today I realize that same God that parted the sea and this says that there was a wall on either side of them i love how it says it it says and moses stretched out his hand over the sea and the lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea dry land and the waters were divided and the children of israel went into the midst of the sea upon dry ground and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left and the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to them in the midst of the sea. Even all the Pharaoh's, all of Pharaoh's horses, his chariots and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians. And we know what happened to them. You know, and that may not be in your life that maybe your neighbors are attacking you or there's strife in your home. But let me say something. I said, the Lord looked upon it. And you see, the Lord is seeing everything that's happening in this world right now. There's nothing that's going by them. You know, those cherubim that have eyes all over them, under their wings and upon their wings and everywhere. That's because the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the good and the evil. You know, when I, when I look at uh, Zephaniah 317, it says, the Lord thy God in the midst of thee, not is in or will be it says in it's instant in the midst of thee is mighty he will save he will rejoice over thee with joy he will rest in his love he will joy over thee with singing um you know i thought about that word in zephaniah and and i said lord i really thought about it i thought those are words of truth and is you must be as real to me by not seeing demonstrations, but you must be as real to me just as you were real to them. There cannot be any difference. At least that's what I want. I don't want, yeah, I, I mean, it's a give me. It's, it's a give me. I'm, we're being attacked by the enemy. It's a give me. But what am I going to do with it? Now, you know, a lot of times during these things, stress overwhelms and takes place. But you know what? It can never, ever shut out the word of God from you. You see, whatever God says, it will be. And there's nothing Satan can do about it. There is nothing. And even the waves and the billows that come over our head are God's waves and billows. They belong to him. And even Jesus told Satan to worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. See, he even told Satan, you're going to bow your knee to him, your God, because you're just a created being. Now, I don't say this like I'm beating my chest and I'm some big war authority. But I've been around some. And you know what? I've I've seen the end of the Lord, that he is good and very pitiful. And that he is full of mercy and tender heartedness. If, you know, I think to myself, yeah, I'm going to get through this. Just like I've gotten through everything. You know why? Because I'm going the Lord's way. And there's always going to be words, you know, like David said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the enemies, even my, uh, at the wicked came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled, my, stumbled and fell. The whole host should encamp against me. And this, 
I will not fear. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the days of trouble he shall hide me in the secret of his tabernacle. He shall set me up upon a rock. See, the entire Bible are lives that are nothing but a mess. Everybody's life was in trouble that you will read about or have read about, hasn't it been? Some people, they'll say, oh, the word, the Psalms are so beautiful. Yeah, they're beautiful because you're seeing what happens to people who got attacked by wicked enemy forces, spiritual, using the God, using other people. You see all kinds of evil. But you know what? We would never know the good of Jesus Christ if we were not partakers of the darkness. Consider the good as well as the bad. Uh, for they both come from God. Otherwise, what man can discover anything about his future? That's what Solomon says. And that's not in King James, but it doesn't matter. You guys know that what I'm saying. You know, I thought about how Jesus is in the midst of the throne as a lamb having been slain. And that he's going to dwell in the midst of the city. Where the city that has no light that will shine in it. It will be always day for the lamb, the throne. It says the lamb, which is in the midst of the throne, is there. You know, when I think about seeing that one day, uh, I would believe that everything that came, that I went through here will be worth every shout of my eternal lungs and the breath of glory God will give me because a day is coming where everything that we are experiencing will be no more. It's death feeding on death in this world and it's going to go the way it's written. And so today I just want to tell you, God is in the midst of you. What, what saith that the word is near you. It is in your heart even in your mouth, that is a word of faith that you preach. So he lives in the midst of you. He lives in the midst of you. Song of Solomon, it says, um, she said to, to the uh, groom, come into my garden, oh spouse. And he says, I have come into my garden, my sister, my spouse. And you know, you, you have to see now, it's time for you to truly see that exactly that same God in the midst of that Red Sea was a demonstration for you and for me. That you see the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein, and he will do everything to deliver his people and to see them on the other side. And right now, you may be listening and you're saying, I don't even know where I'm at anymore with the Lord. I don't feel, I feel like I've done everything right, but everything wrong has happened to me. God will make right every wrong in your life. He will do it. Don't believe me for my own words, but his word himself says it. And he says, if they have no faith, they abideth faithful still. He abides faithful still because he's not able to deny himself. He's going to do it for his own namesake. Christ is in the midst of you and he will deliver and he will rejoice over you. He will joy over you and he will rest in his love. And I am confident we'll be brought out of it when we're to be brought out of it. But I said to the Lord before I did this, I said, I'm going to take everything that the enemy has thrown on us and I'm going to put the light of Jesus Christ upon it and to the intent that Christ will be magnified in your suffering that he will receive the glory and you may not be able to give it to him now, but he knows you will later. So be at peace. O suffering one and know you are dearly beloved. That your names are written in heaven with indelible ink of the blood of the lamb. And that this life you are living in truly is only a flash. If nothing to be measured, in the eternity of eternities because as christ is in the midst of us today 
he will be in the midst of us forever. And so now, as that, I have just ended that, like I'm going to let you rest on that. I want to let everybody know that um, it's important for you to know I'm going to be a little scarce uh, for the next, for this month. I have a lot to do. Please don't worry about us. We'll be just fine. We're in good hands. And so um, don't, you know, some people get scared like, oh no, she's, she's gone. I understand that, you know, new YouTube world people disappear and, you know, but I just want to always uh, be in touch with you and communicate with you what's going on. And uh, we're family, we're brothers and sisters, we're dear friends. And uh, so um, you may not see me as often, but once we get everything settled and everything looked after, then I will be back on uh, routinely. So I thank you so much for your loving patience with me. And I just want you to know how much I love you. And you will be in my heart during these times that I am burning rubber all over the place. <laughs> all right, you guys, God bless you. Go with the Lord, Maranatha.